I want to show you one of the most bizarre flowering plants I've ever grown. This is a type of calico flower or Aristolochia. It's a tropical vine. It's not winter hardy here, but it's really interesting to grow these in the garden because of these dramatic flowers that they produce. You can see it's its leaves right here, they're sort of these pale green heart-shaped leaves and the flower itself is on a long sort of a string here or a long pedestal but uh, it's attached to the back of the flower here and flip it over and kind of see what the back of it looks like but uh, interesting color this beautiful burgundy brownish color and just a really intricate pattern and you can see right down here that sort of has these, these large lips, it sort of splits open. In fact, the flower hasn't even finished opening up completely. It's still kind of crinkled up here at the bottom, but it'll eventually open up a little bit more. But again, a tropical vine from Brazil has a wonderful lemony scent, but a great plant to uh, play around with, to grow and try to get it to bloom in the late summer in the Oklahoma gardening, calico vine or Aristolochia. We have a showy flowering vine on one of the supports here near our studio garden. You can see this vine with the beautiful white flowers and if you hear or read its common name it tells you a lot about the plant. This is Sweet Autumn Clematis and that immediately tells us that it blooms in the fall and it smells sweet and if you get close to the blooms mm, it does have a very delicious fragrance. We can see all of the flowers when they're open at the same time here. It almost looks like the plant is covered with snow. The plant is quite vigorous. It can grow up to 30 feet per year and if you look up at the top of our trellis here you can see that it's already made its way all the way to the top. The sweet autumn clematis or clematis if you prefer is native to Japan and it blooms on current season's growth. So every year before growth begins, you could cut it all the way back to the ground if you want to. And that would probably be a good idea to do with this plant because of its vigorous nature. It will occasionally become invasive and self-seed its uh, progeny around your property and, and into your neighbor's property and places like that. But it does make a showy vine for Oklahoma. Sweet Autumn Clematis. There's a plant that I want to show you that we've been getting a few calls about recently, especially from the southern part of the state. It's this plant right here, this huge vine that we have growing along the fence here of our arboretum. Now, if you look down here, you can see all of the, the fruit the plant is producing. And a lot of people think, well, this is some sort of grape. Well, the plant is in the grape family, but it's not a true grape. In fact, it goes by the common names of false grape, raccoon grape, opossum grape, but more widely known by its name of heartleaf pepper vine. And if you look at the leaves, you can see that they are roughly heart-shaped. But the fruit is quite attractive. You can see there are several colors that the fruit goes through before it finally ripens. Now I say the fruit ripens, it doesn't ripen for you or me because it's not edible by humans. It is edible by several birds and lots of other species of wildlife. And I'll just show you why the fruit isn't really edible. I'll grab one here and you can see that uh, it really it doesn't have a lot of pulp. It has sort of a white and milky sap that comes out and uh, then it's full of three large seeds. So doesn't really look all that tasty and uh, not all that that uh, good to eat so don't be eating the heart leaf pepper vine the heart leaf pepper vine does make sort of a nice ornamental it stays green during most of the growing season and it does look all the world like a grape it has tendrils like grapes you can see it kind of wrapping around there the uh, fruit clusters hang like grapes do, and even the old stems you can see here have the exfoliating bark like a lot of our grapes have. Oklahoma has nine species of native grapes, but this again is in the genus Ampelopsis, and if you see the fruit right here, you'll know that you're looking at the heartleaf pepper vine. 
talked about several vines on our program today, and I'd like to show you one more here in our herb garden. This is a hops vine. And more specifically, this is the golden hops vine. This is one of my favorite hardy perennial vines for Oklahoma. In the springtime, when those new leaves first unfurl, they're a bright, crisp, golden color. But as the heat of summer arrives, the leaves will take on more of a greenish look. But down here, you can see we've had some rain and some cool weather, and we're getting some new sprouts of that nice golden color to these leaves of our golden hops. You can see how it's kind of climbing up one of those, those older vines there. The hops vine enjoys a position out in full sun. It likes an organically amended soil and moderate moisture. If the plants stay dry for a little while and we have some hot scorching winds, we can get a little bit of scorch on the leaves, but those will sort of fall away after a while and uh, we have lots of nice foliage to enjoy. The hops are either male plants or female plants. The flowers are on, on separate uh, selections of the hops vines and you can see here that we've got a female because we're getting lots of hops fruit and of course the hops fruit are well known for their ability to lend a bitter flavoring to beer. The hops also help in the preserving of the beer as well but the Dutch were the first to use hops in the beer brewing and flavoring process back in the 14th century. Well, hops has also been long recognized for its medicinal properties. The hops have a calming or sedative type of property to them. And in some countries, they will make hops pillows for people who are suffering from insomnia to help them relax, help them sleep a little bit better. It's interesting to note that hops are in the same family as marijuana, the cannabidaceae but unlike marijuana, you can grow this and not get in trouble for it. Hops can grow up to 20 feet, so you need an adequately sized support for them to grow on. And I would like to thank Charlie Gray, one of our resident handy persons who constructed this three angle support for our hops vine. He built it out of treated four by fours and treated lath slats, but it makes a great home for the twining, beautiful golden hops vine. Thank you.